Because I'm, quiet, I'm a quiet individual. So I let my actions speak more than my words because I don't, have, I don't need that much to say when I have that. You feel what I'm saying? So now, and then when people talk to me, they didn't understand like this is not just a boxer. Like just want, just want to box. No, I want to do everything possible to be great and not even just boxing, just in life. You feel me? So, but not a, I think that's what I got over the rest of these people. That people too Hollywood to do interviews like this. This is it's regular stuff. You gotta go outside the norm to be great. That's what everybody gotta do. But they don't see the. They want to. They want the. The the outcome. They don't want to work towards to get to that great outcome that they want. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Really, yeah. So, so give a little background on, you know what I'm saying, for me, myself, how long have you been boxing? You know what I'm saying? A little, how long you been boxing? How'd you get into it? Uh, I've been boxing 14 years. Uh, really taking it serious, probably like 13, 12. Because I like, started in the boxing when I was six. And then, because uh, my brother started off, uh, well, we was doing other sports at first, you feel me? So, then I went into, uh, now when it's a boxing, I really start taking it serious for real, for real. Uh, around like eight, nine, like really wanting to put pause on people. It was like, but I, but like, I didn't. But like uh, I've been doing it for 14 years. Like I said, got to got to the national level when I was like 12, ranked number four in the country. I just kept on pushing towards it. Then after that, and now I'm here. You feel what I'm saying? So uh, it's been a long road, but. Yeah. So when did you kind of figure out like I'm actually good at this? You know what I'm saying? Like I actually. If I'm being honest, like sixteen. That's a big ass difference. But from six to sixteen is crazy. Just because I was doing other sports and I wasn't. I wouldn't say I wasn't taking it serious, but I wasn't like. I didn't know the game of boxing. I knew it, but I didn't like understand it. Like, you not know, people say you can you can hear them, but you're not really listening. You feel what I'm saying? So like, I, I had to actually study the sport and do things like that and really get out there. And so like, when I was like 16, I was really going like out of town, sparring, I never did that before. The farthest I went was like DC. I'm a Maryland kid, so I'm going to DC. That's two seconds down the street. That's not nothing, nothing at all. But then I'm going out Ohio and all these other states, Texas, and this is down the third, and I got to where I'm at now. Again, those experiences, bro, bro, that, like 16, yeah, I sparring with pros, getting whooped on, doing some whooping, you feel what I'm saying? I really got good at it, I'm really excited to understand my craft, yeah. Transitioning into the pros, how's that been for you? Uh, many people don't know, I, I took a year, I took a year just uh, sparring, like after the Golden Gloves, I took a whole year of just smart, straight pros, training like a pro, two, three day workouts for a whole entire year before I went pro, so I can get actually prepared. Cause the amp, like the amateurs, is way, way, way different from the pros. Where you going off points, you going off just touching somebody. If you touch somebody more than you than the other person, and you look effective doing it, you can win. Not even if you land in the motherfucking joints, but if you're like actually touching them. And it's moving and then making it look good, then you want to fight not even if you like really hitting them. But like in the pros, it's really about all the effectiveness. So I had to spar pros like Jalil Hackett, I had to spar pros. Uh, I had went out Texas, I spar, uh, I forgot the dude's name, but I went out Texas, I sparred a million pros out there. I just spar Dave with my, uh, they call him the body snatcher. I spar Show Dog, I spar. It was Francois Scarborough, Frank, Trey, Fuller, Trey Fuller, uh, Jay, Jaquim, Hutchinson, Shaquille Daly. I sparred a million. I sparred a million people, and then I went down Boots Gym, got some work from them, and I just like really kept on developing my craft. And then uh, when I finally decided to turn pro around my birthday last year. Uh, it was, it was a game changer for sure. People, people really started to look after that. Yeah. How old are you now? Twenty. Twenty. I turned nine. I turned nineteen. I turned. Yeah, I turned twenty right after that fight. I was nineteen in my first fight. Yeah. You remember your first uh, time in the ring, like sparring, or like your first going back when you was a kid? My first fight. I remember my first time in the ring. I 
probably sparred my brother. Oh, okay. He probably just got out of okay. crying and some more stuff. But my first fight was, uh, I fought uh, Peanut, his name, Rajali Bati, something like that. Don't understand how the fight happened. He had 12 fights on the I was out my first fight, and we got in that ring and we run. And it was actually a closer fight that people want, uh, wanted it to be because I, I was like, I fought when I was younger. I always got in fights in school and stuff like that, so like, I could adapt real quick. But during that time, you only got a minute to bump, so it's like, you, I uh, fought him. And then uh, I, I didn't even end up winning, but I fought him. And then it was like, no, no, you really in there. So a million people in the crowd. It's that sugar, then the sugar, then it was pumping. It's hot as a mother. Everybody knows that time. It's hot as a mother. And it was like, dog. It's like Rose Croft now, but back then. So that small gym, you just got a bump in there. That was my first fight. I remember that. How old was you for that one? I was, I, probably a couple months after I turned eight. Oh, okay. Okay. How many amateur fights in general you have? I had 97. 97? Yeah, I think it was like 61. What are some guys you spar? I mean, you 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 fought in the amateurs, like some notable names. Uh, I spar. I fought Keon Davis. I fought Abdullah Mason. Uh, I fought uh, what's the brother name that be in Devin Devin Haney camp? Uh, I forget his name. Uh, anyway, I fought Scooter Davis. Uh, Derek Davis. I fought Hina, Tyreek Williams, I fought Jamal Harden when he was younger. I fought a lot of people. A lot, all the top names you can think of. I fought Cashflow Diaz, Tom Rank. It's probably the people I'm missing, but I fought a lot of people. And see, I was like I was talking to you just off record, off the camera, about that Scooter Davis fight, you know what I'm saying? That's that's how I kinda gravitate or that's when you caught my eye right there. Talk to me about that fight right there. That whole that whole one week when you find out this is who I'm fighting, you know, preparation, all that. Yeah, I, I was that. trying before I fought because we was trying to fight him. We was trying to get a fight before that, but it didn't work out for some reason. I, forget, I honestly forgot the reason why it didn't work out. We was trying to fight him a couple weeks before the tournament even started, but we knew we had to fight him because he was in the same weight and we was both fighting in that tournament. So it was like, either or, I'm not going to lose to no one B fighter. I'm going to, if I was going to, Fights in my career for it was going to be us. I knew he wasn't going to lose in the buy. That was some garbage. So we was going to see, see each other at the end of the day. But then we uh we fought each other in the semifinals, I believe. The semifinal locals. And uh, it was the biggest fight in that whole time. Fact. It seemed like the whole crowd, you know what I'm saying? The whole crowd was 75%, of, 75 of the crowd was him. 20, like 20 party. 25, 20 percent was me. You feel me? And uh, probably less than that. Probably maybe 10. And then as the rounds went on, you heard and saw people move a little closer to my end. And by the time the fight was over, it was 50 50. So it was 50 50 as far as the crowd goes. As far as the fight goes, it was 100 percent on my end. So, you know what I'm saying? I know something like that got to add a little extra motivation to you when, you when you hearing that crowd before that, that first bell ring. That added extra motivation to you just knowing your back was, you know, against the wall. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't mean to be, like, explicit, but, like, it was in my head. It was like, fuck them. Only, the, only for the reason because you got to go in there, like, you respect the person as a fighter, but you can't respect them in the ring. You feel what I'm saying? So when I got in that ring, it was like, forget who he is, forget... All these people who got his shirt on, they sell a search at the front door. You feel what I'm saying? They getting mango this drink. So I'm like, nah, I'm coming in there. Sting outfit on, the regular all red drink. He got glitter, this, this, down and third. And he coming in, he ready to fight as well. So, and me getting that drink, I knew he was a great, hands down, so he's a great fighter for sure. But when I got in there, it, I had to leave no stone unturned. You feel what I'm saying? So I got in the ring, uh, first round. Feel like I would box him second round. That was a toss up. Third round, I took it to him. I came out with the victory, you feel me? And then ended up, at the end of the whole entire tournament, I got fired out of the tournament, you feel what I'm saying? So it was a great, it was a great experience. I, I love to do it again in the pros when we both like got full, I got full belts or I got two belts, he got two belts, and we 
we bring it to our own time. We beat all the other guys, we beat all the contenders, all the champions, and we come back in the middle. And I would love to do it again because we know it's going to pump. You know what I'm saying? Not even just for the money aspect, just for the city or just for the top DNB in general, you feel what I'm saying? So that's really it. I mean, it was a, it was a great experience. I, if I relived the moment I could, I was, my people was crying, <laughs> all that and some more. I got them up afterwards, respect. You know, uh, yeah, I hope I do it again when the pros get bigger. You think that?